Hey, I like to call this meeting to order Miami Township Trustees meeting first of the month of April. That's April 3rd, 2023. We have the trustee, all th three trustees present. Cynthia Powell's, Banna Roadman, um, Richard. Richard Zopp, building <laughs> inspector. I always want to call you Steve. I get that. And Colin. Oh, Steve. Good old Steve. Ah. And Colin Altman, our esteemed fire chief. Um, entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of March 20th. So moved. I'll second that motion. Okay. I read them. They looked good to me, although I wasn't here. So. <laughs> Any other? Um, anybody have? Oh, you weren't here. Okay. I was. I forgot. I was not here. Mm -hmm. I forgot you were here. COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID strikes. Any corrections? Not I. <laughs> nope. Hearing none, may we vote? Been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the March 20th, 2023 meeting. Uh, Mr. Witcher? Yes. Mr. Hosford? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Was it here? Can't oh, vote. sorry. Correct. <laughs> minutes are approved. All right. Um, like to entertain a motion to pay our approved payment of bills in the amount of $82,244.98. That's general fund $16,883.13. Fire fund $82,244.98. Cemetery fund $703. EMS billing $204.50. Roads and bridges $10,292.90. There's a problem somewhere. Why did you put that the total? Down? Yeah, the, I don't think that. When the total 82? And the fund yeah, is 82. Thank you. Fire fund. I thought that sounded high in the fire fund. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure where that was coming from. Yeah, yeah. I thought, wow, did we get enough money? Um, I've got fire fund. If you know what wrong, I can sit here and do the math, but otherwise, I can't help you. I mean, we could subtract it and think it's right, but. You make the fire fund more like 60. You know, my Is that original is more appropriate? Yeah. I know that you copied. So oh, I have yeah, this one. Tom. I, mean, I don't know how many payrolls she has on there. I have that one. Okay. I don't need the second page. What's, what's the little addition here? Because uh, this is no one an correspondence. One, but no correspondence. Oh, I see. So I was going to use it to take So what do we want to do about these numbers? That's nice. Page two or not? No, I never, I didn't bother to do page two. Okay, there's nothing on page two. Don't worry about it. No problem. I don't know. I've never been in this position before where we can't vote on it because the fire fund is in error, unless the, um, unless the total is in error. Um, unless there's multiple payrolls in there. I, I can't remember the word 82,000. Yeah, but well, it still doesn't work because it gives it. Yeah, yeah. no. So, so but we're saying. I'm assuming that if the, the total's fund. correct, we can we can figure out the fire fund, but it would still be high. Colin um, is saying. Oh. Unless it encompasses three payrolls. I mean, those are the expenditures on the back there. Other than oh. payroll, but we could pass it in anticipation of the Seven correct eight. amount. Uh, or we could go total up all the checks. <laughs> if we take out, if we add everything but the fire fund, subtract it from the total given, it gives a 54,161 for the fire. Does that still sound high? Sounds good to me. <laughs> all right, it could be with payroll. Yeah, it could be. That, it. that would give 54,161.45 on the fire. If I did my math right. Be about 36 for two payrolls. How many cents? 45. 54, 161, 45. So I understand I am not a financial so person. No, no. But you can add subtract. Mostly. So if that is an error, we can correct it? If that turns out to be an error? Well, you're approving paying that much money. And if it's not enough money to pay the bills or incorrectly, then it'll have to be. We're going to have a special meeting. You have another meeting. Do we have a second done? I'll second. I'm hearing no further discussion. Can we vote? 
I'm sorry, I missed the original motion. Who? who I, I did. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the total amount of 82,244.98 um, as corrected in enumeration. Um, Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Approved in that amount. Correspondence. This is a, not a complete list, I have a few to add. Um, we got the U.S. Treasury contact us about SLRFP reporting, which you said you did. Mm -hmm. um, back and forth with Lacey Fox to uh, fit our new microphone, which I, I have really high hopes for. Um, order of state annual financial statement, Green County Engineers um, inv invitation to the May 5th Township Association meeting. I had a question about that. Um, Greenwood County Public Health, their 22 annual report. BJG Law sent a sample small solar facility facilities zoning regulations. OTA, um, Ohio Township Association sent us legislative alerts. They also sent us some pretty nice looking training opportunities this spring. And we got the agenda for the Green County Regional Planning. Um, we had a, a couple other things. Um, things from STARS. A letter of support for our for the um, carbon reduction grant. The, the, the Green County Regional Planning is um, we'll discuss that under new business. They would like us to give them a letter of support for a grant they're applying for. Um, that's basically it. Um, any public comments on the agenda, public? Hearing none, fire, de fire department report. All right. <clears throat> Since the last meeting, we've had 33 EMS incidents and eight fire incidents. Uh, nothing of super excitement. Thank Good. Report. I saw the fire truck over at Friends Care. Was that a false alarm or? Uh, they had a motor burnout and a uh, ventilation unit, I believe. So nothing, nothing serious. No. Terrible. Um, we had seven staff participate in a confined space entry course uh, Sunday the 26th of March. And then they've got two classes, I believe, they're scheduled for this month. Uh, it's a weekend that they have to do to get the rescue part of that, and then they'll be certified. Uh, we already have nine people who are certified for that kind of operation. So, um, what's the name of that? Confined space confined rescue. Space rescue. It basically trains staff to enter and rescue people from confined spaces, which would be like sewer systems, grain silos, elevator um, shafts, elevator shafts, steam tunnels, those kind of things. Anywhere that government and business are required to have permit or OSHA training to, to a, a, a enter. And we have quite a few of those places there, potentially. Um, and the training's free, which is even better. So it's through a PUCO grant. Um, through Cleveland State University. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, speaking of training, uh, Danny Nate and Chris Klein attended a class last week in Fairborn, um, which is part of what's called the Blue Card Command System, and it's a uh, it's a system developed that standardizes incident management and operations. Um, Fairborn and Beaver Creek have adopted the system. Uh, and trained people to be trainers, which is nice because it's a very expensive system to train. Um, so we can get our guys trained at that at a lot cheaper rate because of their their efforts. So those three started that process up, and then um, thank you. We'll <laughs> we'll uh, phase in the training for everybody else over the next two years. So how is that different from? Traditional emergency management training or protocol. Or it's it's an update of a of the system we currently use. Okay. Um, so it's a uh, it's a little bit more streamlined and uh, takes into account some new developments and some federal things 
that type of stuff. For our people, luckily, it's based on what we based all our policies and procedures on, so it won't be a huge learning curve for our guys, which is nice. Uh, but the idea is that the county would transition towards using that system over the next few years, but there's some um, hesitancy from some of the smaller departments. Um, we also had uh, Lieutenant Pelletti went to an eight-hour training session in March that covered for the leadership training class for fire officers and also uh, went over uh, PTSD and, uh, and fire service and that kind of stuff. So getting those guys out for some development. Um, I have here, for your consideration, um, so we've been paying into the Green County Public Safety Information Sharing Network, or PISN, um, for the last two years, I believe, it's $2,000 a year, uh, basically so we can get information from the CAD system, the computer aided dispatch system, uh, addresses, that kind of thing, dumped into our data software so that it would automatically populate certain fields. Um, the PSISN system has a lot more functionality than agencies used. Uh, but initially, we chose not to go after those because of the cost involved. Um, there's a thing that they've implemented that's called CrewForce. Uh, CrewForce is a software package that will work on devices in our trucks and also mobile devices, phones and stuff. That basically gives our guys and gals, crews, um, up to the second information from dispatch. So as a dispatcher's taking notes and typing it in, they'll see it come across their screen. And it has a whole bunch of other features, GPS related things such as, if we go on a call, the truck pulls out, the system knows that we've, through geocaching, knows that we've left the building. Mm -hmm. So the guys don't have to say they're responding. The system tells dispatch we're responding. Same thing when they show up on scene, all that kind of thing. To use that, Previously, it was $50,000 for our agency to get a license, so we, I believe, wisely chose not to go that route. Um, apparently, no one chose to go that route except the city of Xenia and Beaver Creek, so the county decided to just include the cost within the PSIS, PSISN system. So now, for $3,000 versus $2,000 a year, we'll get complete and total full functionality. Um, but in order to do that, we have to assign, well, we, you have to sign this agreement uh, between us and Green County Public Safety Information Sharing Network. The agreement was drafted by the prosecutor's office, so I'm assuming it would meet our needs, because I think we share the same prosecutor. I mean, I know the prosecutor, but I think the same assistant prosecutor takes care of us. And, uh, we had that at this meeting when she was here, and we asked her what it was, she was going to get back with us about that, but now you have, so ah, she's on okay. the book. Good. Which would explain why I have it now, because I got an email saying, hey, we haven't received your agreement yet, and I'm like, what agreement? Oh. So, so think, here it is. So I think what I heard you say was, we're now paying 2000 a year for a certain amount of services, and for $1,000 more we could get the... The big kahuna. The big kahuna. Yes. Is that in there somewhere? I don't think it's so. It's actually the, you on that? It's the fifth whereas in here. <laughs> whereas you'd like the big kahuna. Now therefore. <laughs> Before the ink dries, tell me, I, I, I sound slick. You don't have to remember or take the time to say you're, you're, you're heading to the scene or that you've arrived at the scene. But how do you know that there was no glitch in the automatic system and that it actually got? Because uh, the dispatcher answers that. Oh, the so, oh, so the dispatcher was still responds yes. back to you Even as if you had made the message. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's, I mean, this is a system that's been used previously. You know, now you can get the base model like iPad. In the old days, you had to buy, old days, like five years ago, mm -hmm. you had to buy a $20,000 mobile data terminal for each truck, which was also another prohibitive Right. Uh, thing, but like Dayton's been doing this for years. So if you ever listen to them on the radio, it sounded really weird with the dispatchers just answering trucks that you never heard. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, the ghost uh, fleet of Dayton. But it'll it'll give our crews access to a lot more information about the calls and what's going on. Um, and apparently, I've never played with it, but Xenia City's been using it actively for uh, a year plus, and. Uh, 
from the top down, they, they don't love it. Just keep, you know, the guys show up on scene with much more information than we currently get. And it's easier for the dispatchers so they don't have to give us this whole long report over the radio. It's right there on our screen, so you, know, you can see what instructions they've given the patient, all those kind of things. So, so this is a contract, essentially. This is the contract. So they're waiting for it to get back. Yes, apparently we are overdue, and now I know why. <laughs> I'll make a motion to enter the contract with the county for the service. I second that motion. Any discussion? No. I been moved and seconded to uh, sign the interagency agreement with Green County PSISN for a new rate of 3000 per year. Sufficient? Um, Mr. Moocher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Moyer? Yes. Contract has been approved. Thank you. And they have conveniently put a place for you guys to sign. <laughs> And, can knock that out. and you're all the right people, too. I said, uh, I was going to say, like Lamar Spracklin, or I yeah. <laughs> don't know how long they've been waiting for that. Um, as I sent an email, I sent just the SAM number thing is all taken care of. So we are revalidated with the federal government and can apply for federal grant assistance. Uh, because it's the federal government, the number you have to reapply every year. However, the contract, I believe, that we entered into with Federal Registry Processing is uh, they will renew it for us for three years. So You're talking we about the SAM number? Yeah. And it was a big pain in the butt? Oh, my Lord, yes. <laughs> and it, when we renew in three years, it will cease to be a pain in the butt because it's now fixed? Unless the government, the federal government comes up with some new okay. factoring system. But, um, and I don't know. Like I wish I would, I could take credit for this, but I don't know what changed. All of a sudden, you know, I was banging my head against the wall, and I got an email from the person there saying something. They've changed some requirement, and looks like you're all set to go. What? What? Okay. So, Good. thank you. I will right, scan this and get this back, and probably send it the original too. Uh, so that's all good. So we're happy we can apply it for federal aid for all, for everything. Good. And if there's a disaster, the money will start rolling in. We'll get federal assistance too. Which is I'm sure. That's an extra perk. We would, without the same number, you'll get federal assistance for a disaster, but it's uh, not for everything. So, like some of the small business stuff wouldn't be as as robust as it would with this number. So, well, so it's a good number to have. Hopefully, we. And I will make sure that that is uh, all that information is shared with you all and. Assistant Chief Powell prior to yeah. my departure so that Please, uh, I don't become an indispensable needed consultant. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no. There's my post-retirement gig. <laughs> uh, and then... And you're requiring an executive That's a dangerous one. I'm not requiring one. I'm, I'm I requesting mean, one. <laughs> I meant to say requesting. <laughs> and I mean, I could require it, oh. but I don't think it would go anywhere. That. I would make that motion to move to executive session at about approximately 5.20 in the afternoon for personnel matters related to employee compensation and employee performance. Yeah, two separate issues. Really? Two separate issues. One's for compensation, one's for performance. Okay. Well, you guys, you guys are going to love this, but according to the auditor of state, you can only go into executive session for one purpose. You have two purposes. Um, come back okay. and you come go, back back and go back in again. Yep. Uh, I mean, the second one can wait till the next meeting. Okay. It's not a pressing urge, so we can just go into a matter of employee compensation. How's okay. that? Well, did you see there's two, two things that they're both the same? <laughs> okay. Oh, I mean, I could change them. <laughs> um, so we vote to. I have moved. Is there a second? You said uh, second. Oh, I'm sorry. Moved and seconded for executive session uh, at the request of Chief Altman for discussion of employment, employee compensation. Uh, Mr. Mutter? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Executive yes. session at 522. Uh-oh. <laughs> not, not convening uniform. I'd oh, like okay. to entertain a motion. No motion. To, no motion. We just I'd like to return, return to um, general session. Okay. Uh, and the result of the meeting. And the result was no decision made. Thanks. And Chris, you had a few things for. Oh no. 
I, we'd like to, Chris We've said. We've got two, two unexpected um, guests. visitors, guests. Um, Sorry for being dressed would, would you introduce <laughs> yourselves and please? Oh, um, do you want us to come over so the camera can see us? Sure, but you oh. can. Oh, if you if you want to be if you if you want your face on camera, oh. we can hear the camera you're, can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you're hey. welcome to be on camera. Uh, my name is Izzy. Uh, I'm John. This is John. Uh, we're actually a couple uh, who are older students at Antioch um, and some of the newer students, but we're the leads on a student-led initiative where we are attempting to start what will hopefully be a yearly festival uh, held on the Horseshoe uh, that this year will be on May 20th from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. that has the goal of bringing the community both in the school and out of the school together a little closer, especially since ever since COVID things have been so hard and everyone's kind of gotten split up and it's been hard to get communities back together. Like we hope to uh, get a little bit more funding for the school, but that's not the main, um, the main hope. It's just, we're trying to make a nice day for everyone. Um, this year will be free for anyone to attend. Uh, we've got some big plans. Uh, we're gonna have one of the students who works in Glen Helen is seen about doing a hawk show. We're going to have a fashion show. We're hoping to have a restaurant off where different restaurants from the town come and compete and then everyone gets a bit of the spoils so no one needs to be angry. Um, we're going to have tables and activities both for the student parts of the school. So if students are, for instance, we have a baker who's gonna have a baking table. We're gonna have someone selling candles. A bunch of our artists are gonna have tables. Faculty uh, have some stuff they wanna do. We're trying to convince the, uh, when the science teachers to quote unquote blow something up. <laughs> um, something <Probably>. small. <laughs> um, so maybe we better have the fire department on hand. <laughs> well, we were gonna ask if you guys wanted to come in fact. Um, well, like maybe more of a, a baking soda kind of explosion than a fire pie. <laughs> um, we're gonna have tables for the uh, people in the community to come and do whatever they want with. Um, we know the first year will be a little messy, but we're just really hopeful about it and feel like if we get it going at least the first time if it's messy hopefully we can really build this out in the future um well i'm gonna be sorry i know i'm trying i don't have my favors in front of me and stuff um could i'm the chosen coordinator for could it could you clarify the date please oh uh may 20th thank you and then the open hours will be from 11 a.m to 7 p.m with time before and after for people who have tables and such. Set up and tear down. Um, but we're just trying to get the word out. We, we haven't been able to put our flyers up yet because the date was getting fully structured and then we have one final meeting with admin that it's already been confirmed but just to touch base on Wednesday and then we'll start going around even more. Um, we had told Mayor Pam when we were first planning and she was really excited and so was the clerk. He said just to call them clerk and everyone will know. Yes. So um, are you limiting participation to the residents of Miami Township? Yeah. Um, we're happy for people who uh, are outside of it to come. Our focus was in Yellow, is right, or our more focused area right now is Yellow Spring in the township. Mm -hmm. um, but if like someone who say lived in Beaver Creek or something wanted to come over, you'd be like, yeah. Yeah, we're planning on um, sending flyers to um, a lot of the local libraries and colleges around the area as well. Just, uh, so they can come see what we're up, what Antioch's up to. Yeah, and uh, John and I have been chosen as the coordinator and he's like second in charge because uh, he has even a few more years than me, but uh, for instance, I have 10 years of convention planning experience and he has even more. Wow. So um, we used to do a yearly convention that would have about 2,000 people on average and would run for 72 straight hours. Okay. So <laughs> this isn't that big. No, <laughs> um, I, I asked that question because as a 
fairly long-term resident here in Yellow Springs, I watched what used to be a community event downtown, which wasn't called street fair at, 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 in the beginning, evolve into something where huge numbers of people that have nothing to do with this community come and, and gather. And, and, and a lot of them are to make money or to, to buy things and not really to, to talk with each other. So I'm just saying, well, make sure that people aren't taking, oh, there's people gathering at, at, at Antioch on, in May every year. I'll come and sell something. You don't want that. I don't think you want uh, that to happen. We, we are going to have sales tables open for people of uh, just kind of activities, sales, show off what you'd like to do, represent, for instance, the land trust is going to come and have a table. Um, we, uh, you're the chief, right? Mm -hmm. We're actually going to be contacting you and asking um, if you guys would be willing to come over. Um, in whatever capacity. I know we had talked a little in, uh, with tensions. We, we thought you guys also might have good um, advice because with tensions, how they are, we knew asking the police to come and be a bit of a security force might make people uncomfortable. So everybody adores you guys. Okay. And we were gonna ask if you wanted to come, but you don't have to in that capacity at all. Either. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to look at staffing on, on that day and see how things look. But, or if you guys, like, if anyone here wants table space to be like, hey, this is what's going on, and you got all that. Um, towards your point, um, for out of the community, like, it, at some point, like the first year, we might not run out of tables or space for tables sold, but when it gets to the point where we actually have to start making decisions on who can and who can't, uh, it would be more focused um, in and around Yellow Springs first. Like they would get first choice over people from outside of the area, especially like Dayton, because I know like the street fair drives everyone crazy because the amount of people from Dayton who come in and just sort of take over the town. This, this year, uh, we are asking if people are able, if they're taking tables, if they can donate to donate to standing on, but it's not necessary. Like. For instance, if we had a kid who, as long as we have table space, if we had a kid who's like, hey, can I sell them maybe? But I didn't buy any money, we'd be like, here you go. So, um, and because everything's on donation, from our research, that means the legal issues with, um, like, vendor sales. Licenses. Yeah, vendor licenses is not an issue. So, so well, I, gave, like I gave you uh, our email, trustees. Yes. trustees. So if, if you could send us when, when you formalize it, mm -hmm. uh, send us a, the notice, uh, and then we can oh, work from that. It's um, Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, we, we have our finalization meeting with uh, the person who plans the Antioch calendar on Wednesday. They just had a few questions for us, and then we're free to start sending out all the info. Okay. Sounds like a great idea. Sounds very ambitious. Thank yeah. you very much for coming and sharing it with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. you. And um, if fun. you guys have anything you're worried about or want to reach out to us, uh, we actually have an official email. Okay. Um, thank you. Antioch Victory yeah. Festival. Oh. Is that what the name of it's going to be? Yes, it's the Antioch Victory Festival. This is one one for humanity. At AntiochCollege.edu, and we should be getting our website okay too. So we'll be getting our domain name and do, doing the web presence. And sorry again for not being prepared at all, <laughs> but everything happens for a reason. So. No, 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 and this group only meets every two weeks, so. Oh, that worked well. <laughs> Yeah, they, sh they just came in the door asking for rope, <laughs> and I had rope in my pickup truck. Thank you again. And I invited them to contact us. Well, yeah, someone right across the street was getting rid of some uh, old countertop. <laughs> and we were like, well, that can be useful. <laughs> okay, great. Um, um, any questions or anything? Because we, we can skedaddle if you'd like. You're welcome to stay. 
Uh, but don't feel obligated. Oh, yeah. We just want you to know we you're welcome. We are in the middle of a renovation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful evening, but you're welcome to stay. Um, are there any other meetings we should plan to come to in the future? I know you said this was the township and not the town meeting. The village council meeting. You were, talk, you were talking to Mayor Pam. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the village, the village council is at 7 on the same day as we meet. So we'll meet at five, so somebody could go to both meetings. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you could go this evening at seven if you wanted. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, you are yeah. um, But you said it's every two weeks. Mm -hmm. I say it on the first and third Mondays. The first and third Mondays. Yep. We'll, we'll see right. about right. coming when we have more information. <laughs> yes, I, either the next one or the one after that. So thank you guys so much for your Same time. You. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Good to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Good to meet you too. Enjoy the rest of your meeting. Hi. Will do. Good luck with all your planning. Thank you. May it not be too tedious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Important. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. So. You had a few things for the fire. He's finished. Finished. I, I am in fact finished. All right. Let me run through these pretty quickly. I noticed in the bills we paid AC service of five or six hundred dollars for a sump pump. And yeah, I put a note on that because I don't think that's for us. I was going to say I that's don't. Not. I knew it. Don't know where the was that yours? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't I sure why the sump pump was. Here. Yeah. That's, I was <laughs> racking my brains to figure that out. Um, I didn't question it. We bought like four thousand rolls of paper towels from Office Depot. What happened to Sam's? Don't they? Yeah, paper towels. Or? Oh, we haven't. We, we, the accounts are all switching over this month, basically. We haven't switched over yet. So, okay. Well, enjoy those four thousand. Cassidy just got all his uh, got all his passwords set, so he can start ordering everything. So. Okay. I've been meaning to ask uh, for from forever now uh, what the status of the building maintenance is. Is everything up to date? All the filters been changed. All the as far as I know, yeah, everything is. Knock on wood. Um, Who's in charge of that? Nate takes care of that stuff. Because he has building maintenance experience. I, I just haven't seen any um, invoices for huge, expensive air filters for the for the rooftop units. I will double check, but I mean, they've been telling me everything's been taken care of. So I mean, <laughs> they they're supposed to be replaced relatively frequently. Yeah, and I imagine they're not giving them away. So. I just would like to make sure that there isn't. Yeah, any, you know, I will. Uh, I will find out tomorrow because today's working tomorrow. Stuff. Okay. It might have been there was a stockpile of them. I don't. And all the individual ones are washable, so you go around and pull those out. Hold, hold them off. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything from Fred Cox or Jason um, Funderburg, but I've taken it upon myself to go to. Uh, um, the cement place in Springfield, Bryce Hill? Bryce Hill, who provided the cement for the apron, yeah. and the cement head of the whole cement business over there was very nice and uh, offered to come and inspect the spalling and contact uh, the Cement Engineering Corporation of Ohio in Columbus and run that by them and see what they think and see if they want to come down and look at it. I talked to him this I talked to him last week. He called me this morning, said he'd be out today and look at it. So I haven't heard back from him, but I will report when I Where is something. the spalling? On the apron and the back mostly, but if you look, there's little patches everywhere. There was a guy okay, well, with a pickup truck and a reflective jacket looking at the back ramp today, so. Could have been Andy. He, that may have been him, or it's just some crazy person. Oh, possible. <laughs> Which uh, is always possible in Yellow Springs. <laughs> anything ever come of the glass farm burn? Uh, they, um, they being the Tecumseh Land Trust, has to get, we met and they have to get permission from the village to do any controlled burn there, so I told them more than likely at this point it would have to be in the fall. Okay. But you still have communication? Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm just waiting to hear what, they had to go to Environmental Commission and then that would then go to Council and then 
and I think the UN General Assembly was involved somehow mm -hmm. in that as well. So. <laughs> Marilyn, would you like to update us on where we are with the uh, uh, fire EMS assessment project? Well, I'm eagerly looking for Frank Cook's. He he probably read that we we said okay, all systems go, mm -hmm. and he said great. I'll talk to the fire chief, and we'll and I'll get up the the assessment to not the estimate together the um not the estimate but a contract, mm -hmm. and then I'll send the contract to you to sign. And I've not seen it, and I keep thinking, am I missing it? But I no. Well, Colin hasn't talked to him. Yeah, I haven't seen oh. Frank. So I did, I checked my voicemails and. Maybe it might be worth the follow-up just to Definitely. see if we can get a, a timing on that. Yeah, because he's used, I, I'm surprised because he gets back right away and it's been a week maybe since. It's usually John the spot. Or the last meeting, mm -hmm. if you recall, I had this great idea about recruitment and retention and, and taking the equipment and people to activities and mm -hmm. stuff. I have a new one. Right. You're talking about the recruitment of... Yeah. You're having trouble falling asleep at night, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> recruitment of volunteers? Yeah. Or? Well, new people. People. Volunteers or potential or explorers or whatever. <laughs> We're back to the school. We have a project, coordinated obviously with the school, of either take a student to school day or take a student home day. You know, maybe the best... I mean, you, you provide transport. Oh, to their home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not your home. <laughs> Don't do that. Might get a little bit of liability exposure on that one. No, but I, I think they'd love it. You know, the best student in this is some such, such as class, you know, gets the Tuesday pickup at their home and in a truck or an ambulance or whatever and brought to school. Yeah, we've done that in the past. Cool. To get them involved, to start thinking yep. about fire departments. Mm -hmm. Is being aware of the fire department. So, I, I, put that bug in George's ear, please. I have to look it up. Um, one of the shows that NPR had uh, uh, something that I heard a little bit of about recruitment of volunteers in New York, and um, they were getting tax relief, and real estate tax relief mm -hmm. for being a volunteer fire department. Awesome. We've tried that. Uh, that's not in the Ohio Revised Code no. at the moment. Well, that makes it easy. Yeah. There's stuff in the, the Governor's Volunteer Task Force suggesting that because other states have found that mm -hmm. somewhat successful. Mm -hmm. um, the feeling, which I just had a meeting with a video call with the marshal today. And the feeling is that things with a lot of money attached are not going to make it through that. The state legislature, in its current form, but I mean, we always have. There is there is a bill that would do income tax credits. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that. Well, I mean, there's been several bills that yeah. have always died, but hopefully this push, particularly now that the governor's behind it, though there's also the question of what his popularity is with his own legislature. Cause, but hopefully that will help out quite a bit because the governor is a big supporter of well, it was his task force. So yeah. <laughs> it is interesting because I was looking at all those things on your Ohio income tax that you can get deductions for and there are odds and ends of all sorts of things so they are. that's a, a place where the legislators can mm -hmm. tuck little things in the final thing i had uh, again as a result of the ohio local government conference is whoever was putting this particular part on was very adamant about all employee records should be under the control of the township office so if you have any employee records in your office, they really need to go into the safe in their own little place. To find records, you don't mean yeah. like pay personal, records. Personal records person, and applications, personal. whatever. The stuff that's private. Whatever's in there. No, yeah, I've got an entire file cabinet of that stuff. Oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> current members? I mean, but the whole big drawer, like a drawer this big of Everyone's personnel file, yeah. We don't need How big? <laughs> well, it's a sideways file uh, cabinet. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, all I'm saying is, you know, they were very adamant about records being kept in the township office. Really? Yeah. Now, is that just the personnel Does the office count as being in the. No. No? Mm -hmm. 
because the fiscal officer is not in with him. <laughs> uh, you are certainly welcome to check with the auditor state, but mm, that's okay. what I was told. And that's all I have. For the fire department. Mm -hmm. the state for more Mr. S Dan, Cemetery and Roads. Okay. It's the last meeting we have had no barriers. But we have a couple ashes coming up. One on the 15th, and we have another, but I'm not sure about the date. They come mm -hmm. today. As soon as we we'll have a couple ashes next week. I have a question about how many, roughly how many do we do a year in Glen Forest total? All the different versions of Glen Forest. 25 school burials, 30, 35 probably. A year? Mm -hmm. I think we average about 30. Um, okay, we so have, I was wondering we how many years it would take to we fill had, in. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Right. Yeah. So I would say probably 30 ish. A good year. Okay. That's, so we have space for many decades. We have space. We have space. Uh, Clifton see. averages around 20, 18 to 20, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, that's a, that's a big year. Yeah. I mean, 14 ish, 15 yeah. would be a good year. It depends. Let's see, we picked up flowers. Flowers are all picked up, both cemeteries, everything's cleaned up. Mm -hmm. I think we've got grass growing in the grove area. Yeah, I know. Nice green hue. It's kind of muddy, I didn't walk out there, but it's... It's very light green. I was there yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying if you look out across, it looks like there might be either some of the is coming back. Something's up. coming up. Something's coming up. So. Were those? Did you have your sunglasses on? Those, no. <laughs> those green sunglasses? No. Okay. Yeah. It's a little very faint. Okay. It should get right. better. It can change from one day to the next. Yeah. Mm, warmer weather will help. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I guess maybe I'm a little anticipating, but I think it's going to come on. Do we want to put any mulch on the scattering area? Uh, if Brandon thinks that's a good idea, because that's his responsibility, then I think that's, that's a good idea. I think we need a little bit. I, that, I think you could. Because I'm going to do some other mulching, so all I right. have it done all at once. Yeah, and great. trees here. Mm -hmm. That'll be something from later in the week. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think we're going to start mowing in another week. Mm -hmm. week. I imagine you are. So. Yeah. It is that time. And that's all I had. Okay. We have a resolution. Oh, oh, just oh, one sec. Back to cemeteries. I thought that was cemetery. Oh no, that's well, roads. Sorry. Okay. Back to cemeteries. Uh, some time ago, even though I don't remember it, I agreed to uh, do some background on pet burials, pet cemeteries. Uh, And Ohio, Ohio Revised Code 961 uh, has you know, six sections, and it's specifically about pet cemeteries. Uh, there's a minimum size of three acres, uh, and you file with the county recorder that the, this, these acres are for a cemetery, or a pet cemetery. And then there are all sorts of rules about endowment and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and this was passed in 1986. It's been some revisions. But, and we have, in the state, 13 pet cemeteries. Uh, I have not found anything about rules in human cemeteries and pets. Mm -hmm. But there are a couple news articles that imply that it's uh, legal. In some states, it's illegal to have mm -hmm. uh, pets buried in the human cemetery. Uh, so it's all over the map about uh, shared caskets or being able to and, these are agreements or rules set by the individual cemeteries. Mm -hmm. And if, if we were going to do that kind of thing, we need to go to another layer of legal advice. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But there are also cases of people who object to the change in the rules or feel this is uh, not respectful. So you know, they have family in the cemetery and they don't want any go off the in the cemetery. So, uh, so we, need to, we need to think of all that. <coughs> Uh, I can go into more detail, but that's okay. Well, that's a, that's a start. Well, well, what's weird is it, this pet cemetery. A minimum of I've read that two minimum of three acres. We have our our prairie cemetery is three acres, isn't it? That's a just, lot of just land, short, yeah. A lot of land to, to devote to pets. I know this is a big pet town, um, but then if you bury with people, there is no such. Amount of land to set aside? I don't, I don't, yeah, it's so fuzzy. Uh, uh, Do you know if Ohio? Apparently, or? there are. Uh, apparently, from these two news articles I read, uh, there are Ohio cemeteries that do have sections for pets. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've heard, I've, I've heard of that. And, but then there's, again, uh, various versions of shared burial and that kind of thing. So we still don't know if we're allowed to? Well, yeah. the information that you got that implied it was probably okay, was that specifically for the state of Ohio or just maybe around the country? Uh, uh, Ohio, it was uh -huh. Columbus Dispatch and Akron Beacon Journal, they made reference to local cemeteries and their practices mm -hmm. and also to some people objecting. Mm -hmm. uh, so that tells me that it's not absolutely forbidden the way it is in some states. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, what were you thinking they, about? One of the deals is uh, you can charge a fair amount of money. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> you know, it occurs to me that the, the real problem, you could have a section of your cemetery that allowed dual burials or whatever you want to call them, petted, petted people together. But it's that transition time, those people that have already bought plots, mm -hmm. you know, can they trade that in and move over to the other part? Oh, but my family's here. And you, you're going to have an awkward time because, as you say, there are going to be people that, that, don't, that don't think that's right, and there are going to be people that, that do think it's right. And I don't imagine that it's an easy process, but if you wanted to move in that direction, I think you would start having a section of the cemetery that was, that it was permitted in. What I had originally thought when, when it was, came up to me anyway, was the, the, the concept of casket with a plastic bag of cremated remains of a pet. In the casket? In the casket. Mm -hmm. No full yeah. body, uh, handling it at all. Strictly yeah. cremation. Strictly cremation, yes. The, very, the natural area doesn't allow plastic, but well, I think that's a silly rule, but, um, but well, I'm fine with it. They, they also don't allow, well, they don't allow uh, yeah, it is. I, don't I mean, people put all kinds of things in caskets. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, that's what made me, yeah, that's sort of well, no I was talking about the, not in the natural burial area. Yeah. Uh, the natural burial area is something else. Yeah. It's yeah, sort think. of interesting that, to try to imagine that your pet dies at the same time you do. <laughs> There's going to be people that are going to object to that. Also. Very Egyptian. Very Egyptian, yes. They have cremation boxes uh, yeah. for the natural burial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They do. I think a lot of people hold on to their pets that way. Yeah. Oh. I, actually, here's what I want to say though. It, so people put things in the casket. It's what you put on the headstone if there is one that's going to matter. If you say, "Here lies me and my and my favorite dog," then everybody knows, <laughs> right? If you don't, you know who who's going to remember and object and everything else. I, I'm Richard and Barky, his best friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I'm still not clear, and I know we're not, if, if we're allowed to do that now. Well, if we'll, we'll yeah. have to um, yeah. consider that. I, 
<clears throat> this is not an issue that is burning for me, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> but I've, you know, I've, I've copied the law, I copied the list of cemeteries in Ohio, and I'm glad to participate in further discussion, but I turn it over to somebody else. <laughs> I would just suggest you all read Stephen King's Pet Cemetery first, <laughs> just to know the risks. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much. And, um, um, appreciate it. At, right now, it's we have a don't ask, don't tell policy on whether your pet's ashes are in your um, yeah. casket, in your um, ashes with you. No, you can't say that. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming, you know. I mean. Anyway, <laughs> say, it's whether you if, announce if, it or not. If I was going to buy a plot, which I may someday do, and it said pets can be buried in that same cemetery, I might, might be looking. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And then when does it stop, though? <laughs> Is it just pets you don't want to be buried in? <laughs> Mr. Rhoda? What if it's my horse? <laughs> Mr. Rhoda? Dan Rhodes? Okay. <laughs> We now have a new bush hog, mm, real nice shiny green one, uh, works pretty good. I can cut it in grass, but <laughs> I've ran it and everything seems to be just fine. The backhoe's been repaired, it's up and running. Did you get it back? Got good. Got it today. Yeah. Uh, quick. Seems to be all right? Yep, yeah, works just good. fine. No leaks. That was the whole idea. Yeah. yeah. Things like that. That's it. Yeah, it works just fine. Uh, we are going to probably berm on Tobias Road tomorrow because we bermed Brian Park Thursday. I saw that. Looked nice. Yeah. yeah, I thought so. Some of the areas didn't think were necessary to kind of waste the material. So we hit the heavy areas. I, I kind of wondered why. <laughs> okay, now. Well, I, what do you wonder? Yeah. Well. Is there some other areas you wanted that I didn't do? No. But, I mean, you went. After the new blacktop is what I I didn't wasn't quite sure, you know, when the new blacktop went to both from end to end. I don't know. It was just it just looked like there was a pop. It doesn't matter. It looked nice. Well, the door at the at the end of the park, we put some down through there because that was a pretty good drop off, and it's ours. Mm -hmm. And we turn around and come back down the hill mm -hmm. and put some in front of that parking lot right there because it was a serious drop off, kind of tapered it. So. So well, tomorrow, that's the plan tomorrow, we're supposed to yeah. Tobias Road. Okay. You say burn? Burning. Burn. <laughs> Putting gravel on the bones. Protects yeah, the edge of the road. Then I'll have the pictures for the truck and the bush hogs sitting in. I didn't bring my iPad today to take pictures and send them. Okay. I'll do it tomorrow. Great. Um, you should. I'm going to take three days off, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. it might only be two, but for now, three. Mm -hmm. And then the 14th, I have to have a medical procedure, so I'll be off the 14th Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I got a list for Brandon, so he'll be busy. All right, Molly. And yeah. time for the resolution? Mm hmm. Uh, to entertain a motion. For resolution. We need a number. 2023-22. Cool. 22 is on the appropriations. Well, so we could just call it 23. Okay, well, why not? 23, 23. Huh. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately pro appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. No, wrong one. <laughs> yeah, you got to say I didn't write that. 2022. <laughs> Whereas Miami Township Roads Department has replaced an obsolete 2004 F-150 truck and an obsolete bush hog mower, and whereas Miami Township wished to dispose of said property, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby directs the Township Road Administrator to sell or otherwise dispose of said obsolete, obsolete equipment by such a method to obtain the best possible cash sale. Equipment is to be sold as is with no warranty. Um, can I get a? I'll move for that resolution to be passed, <laughs> and I will second it. Okay. Any further discussion? Only discussion is I found this resolution was necessary. 
it reminded me uh, after <laughs> going to the local government <laughs> conference this past week. You so, learned so much there. Yeah. <laughs> May we vote, please? Uh, it's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2023-23, disposal of obsolete township equipment. Ms. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Resolution is approved. Uh, Roads look excellent again this week. We try to stay up on We try. Do we need anything down? I didn't do that. No, no, no. no. And you took care of those things we talked about the last time. I thought that was nice of you. Thank you. Do you want to reserve on that truck? What did we talk about? I thought okay. we said 10. Yeah. Okay. The bush hog no. Okay. I'll do it. Fiscal officer's report. W would you mind if I went back to fire if there was one additional? Not at all. Not at all. Um, Prior meeting, uh, Chief had set out uh, an excellent pamphlet with his budget priorities for year 23-24. I asked him to prioritize the priorities. He did and gave me, and I, and I said uh, just a kind of theoretical $50,000 if you had that, what would you spend it on? And he laid out the different things uh, that he would uh, uh, like to acquire. Uh, you uh, remember somewhere in between that time and this time, I n knocked out a few numbers about fire expenditures, what they equal up to this point on an average per week, and if you multiply that by the whole year out, there would be a certain amount, and the auditor's estimated of uh, resources for 23 for fire department was approximately $180,000 over that amount. And if you take the 140,000 out of that, that they, the fire department owes us uh, for advances from last, uh, late last year, that leaves approximately 140,000 uh, to have um, on the plus side in the department. That number is a little bit less because it does not include 2181 uh, figures, which were just really hard to because so much of that money was moved around and was spent for salaries instead of things that it was supposed to be spent for. So I wasn't real confident in those numbers, but if you rough in maybe 40,000, that would still leave 100,000. Um, I would like to move that we authorize he purchase those high priority uh, items that uh, he specified in his last, uh, his last meeting. <coughs> well, I... I think a proper motion would include a little more description of those items. Okay. And then I'll second the motion. Number one, uh, six sets of turnout gear uh, for approximately $22,000. Uh, need another set next year, but that's next year. Uh, and number two is turnout gear storage, which is 28 sets of lockers at approximately $15,000. Uh, as you know, that there's a room in the back which is set up for uh, lockers for, for the staff to put their gear in that now is laying all over the floor and has since we've been in the building. Uh, number three, the radio batteries, uh, which are relatively important, so the radios work, which is a $3,000 expenditure. Uh, an upgrade for the website, which you guys have talked about, and the mobile data platforms, uh, which are important for chopping out all this new data that we're we're getting and uh and producing at approximately ten thousand dollars that came up to pretty close to 50. Did you have to pull the items out of that no she wrote the minutes so she they were in the minutes for that <laughs> okay thank you um I second the motion. Any further discussion? I, this is all my own thing, but I, I still don't feel real comfortable with the numbers. But um, which numbers? <laughs> the that the, 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 the half of it or spend what? or the, okay, I'll, I'll talk. Um, our projection of how we're going, like 
maybe we should talk if we're allowed to talk outside this meeting. Um, no, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. If I took our, our funds, our full balance on any given fund, mm -hmm. which is to current date, to current date, As and I to took anything in the future, and I took this line and, and revenue status. If we have. Um, that's how much we've been appropriated estimated resources. Mm -hmm. That's the revenue we've received so far, and that's how much we're going to get. What, am I, what, are, what are you looking at? I'm just looking at revenue status. I can pretty much count on that number and add that to the fund balance to see what we have for the rest of the year. Correct? Otherwise, how do we know where we're at? Well, in, in, in one way, we know that because... Um, in 2191, we have a final appropriation of a, a million one seven nine nine two 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 three, yeah. which is less than what the auditor's estimated uh, resource is by about six hundred thousand dollars. And as you can see, we have spent year to date twenty five percent, which mm -hmm. is exactly one quarter of one year's finances, yeah. and we are at exactly one quarter of the calendar year yeah. to this point. I was going to mention that at the fiscal officer part, but I'll just throw it in now. Most of our funds are tracking almost exactly at 25 percent, okay. where we're supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, our revenue is tracking almost exactly where we're supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and, and so, uh, personally, I feel we're in really good shape for our projections of what we will have and as so we go on. And so, at the end of the year, when we were using some of the 2023 funds to finish up the year. Mm -hmm. Is that factored in? Is that the, the 140 we borrowed from the, the general fund? Is that we haven't spent money that wasn't appropriate for 20. We haven't spent some of our revenues to finish up 22. And, and so it's not tracking in 2023, have we? Well, I'm, I, I got lost there somewhere. We, we, got a, we got a tax advance. Yeah. And we used it to finish up 2022. Mm -hmm. So that wouldn't have been anything that was appropriated for 2023. The amount of that advance? How, how does that advance fit in the budget? Uh, I mean, you said something about paying back that 140 or whatever. Yeah. I mean, does this 25 we spent year to date include things that we that we borrowed from Peter to pay Paul in 2022? Not the 140. Um, but that's all we borrowed was the 140. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to trust you, Chris. I don't feel completely. I'm learning this, and I'm going to get. I've learned so much since last year, and I just want to know exactly where we are. And I don't, but I trust you that we need these things. Well, as you've that, been that as you've been crowned fiscal officer, you know, <laughs> on the board. Um, I'm going to get on it. Okay, so. Um, but I, I know what you're saying, and there's there's always reservations, and you know. See, like at um, some point, you pretty much just got to fish or cut bait or whatever else they say. True. But these are important yeah. items that, yeah. that, that they need and for their safety that. and for the yeah. and these are the basically the minimum that we feel that we can yeah. justify at the moment. There's a whole another page of them for for the rest. Like of Like I was three. feeling really comfortable that we could handle this payroll and we could not use it up to the very last drop so that we have room to grow. Yeah, but we've got to make up for lost time. We got to make up for lost time. Uh, okay. You know, if everything was running right up to date, we wouldn't have this backlog. Yeah. Things to yeah. And there stay. will be, I mean, like payroll wise, there will be cushion. Yeah. Because it's, I'm assuming, the number is budgeted for the full year. Yeah. But there'll be four months without my salary, my insurance, yeah. and my pension. Yeah. Which. Okay. So let's get these well, things going. Allow if you needed to do some more raises, like last year, we felt the need to do them in the middle of the. Or if you need year. to hire a consultant after. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, you got to pull that application. I'm telling you. That's not, that's not so why? I'm going to say that I don't need to fully understand this without before I vote in favor of these well much needed things. And I see the cushion is about a hundred and some thousand. You're asking for fifty, so it's all good. 
And it really is all good, but I was just. <laughs> well, good. Thank you very much. No, thank been moved you. And seconded to um, approve the expenditure of, as enumerated for fire department priority items. Yes. An amount, an estimated amount of fifty thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mucher. Yes. Mr. Hoff. Yes. Mr. Smart. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry for taking us backwards. Um, but no, you took us forward, actually. <laughs> okay. I'll take us backward again. We're having a natural burial, natural, what, GNFB? Take backwards. Should be Glen Forest Natural Burial, right? GFNB, yeah, and that's why I couldn't figure out which. That Glen Forest right. Natural Burial, um, we're meeting here on Monday, and um, the whole thing, we're going to discuss a number of things. One of them is interesting. We found on the website uh, the general rules, no dogs allowed in the cemetery, and the general rules. Mm -hmm. and, um, and at the same time, people love to walk their dogs to the Natural Burial Cemetery. So These are um, live dogs. These are live dogs. <laughs> on leashes, mostly. And, you know, somebody can point. Some, one of our people offered to get those little baggy things we, I don't know, oh, yeah. because they've been finding little drops of, you know, like, dog do. Um, so, we'll talk about the tomorrow. We, I, I don't think we're going to take dog. We don't have the, we can't monitor dogs in the cemetery, so maybe we should take, possibly, you know, what you said, we should take that rule off the rules, unless we allow dogs. It's the, reason that, the reason it went in there, and this was from, uh, another cemetery is uh, let, let's say that there is a burial going on and now we also at the same time have three people with dogs walking through the, the cemetery or the cemetery next to us and those dis dogs decide to bite or or whatever and disturb a, a what would be a very solemn moment um, I think that's the reason and it's easier to say, you know, at, when you need to say it, you know, there's not, mm -hmm. dogs are not allowed if you just you know, please, you know, leave as yeah. opposed to, you know, can you quiet those yappy little things up? Yeah. We okay, can so leave it on there. What? It's, it's there. there if you need it. We can throw the dog. Not there well, to be enforced. Another thing. And when is the meeting, please? Mm -hmm. um, April 10th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Okay, so if it's, it's, that's a, just a, a guard, and we shouldn't help. God knows we can't police people walking dogs, that, nor would we probably want to, except for the cleanup after themselves would be nice, but okay. Now are we ready for the fiscal officer's report? Yeah. Sure. Okay, she sent us a resolution. So, resolution 2023-22, amendment for amendment of permanent appropriation. I'll read it, then we'll do discussion. Whereas it is an ongoing process, God knows, to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations, road and bridges, increased by $31 in, for property insurance. Fire fund increased property insurance by $527. Um, here I have a motion. I shall move. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, yeah, I don't think that the reference to God is appropriate in a <laughs> Right. And it's not in the written resolution. Right. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I shouldn't have said that. No, seriously, I shouldn't have. But um, I guess my question is, like, what happened? We decided we want to pay our property insurance and we fell $31 short than we estimated. I mean. Yes. I would say that. Or, or there's not enough money in the fund to pay a bill. That's why those. I, I, re I realize that. It just seems. Trivial. Um, yeah. And property insurance, likewise, you have to pay the property insurance for it for the firehouse? 
this property insurance. Mm -hmm. And we we had allocated 527, not enough? Apparently. Okay. I'm assuming um, it was based on last year's appropriation or the one that went up due to okay. supply chain issues. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah, the, that's done. Yeah, there's all that property insurance waiting in the bay on the ships. <laughs> That's the line. I know that once we pay them, we're done. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll never see it again. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Any further discussion? Aye. Right. Moved and seconded to um, adopt resolution 2023-22, amendment of permanent appropriations as enumerated. Uh, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Moocher? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Um, may I just add one thing? Uh -huh. One little bitty thing? Actually, it's going to be two. So, <laughs> the one little thing is uh, at the local government. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I, 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 don't know. I wanted to be there so badly. Uh, there I was did. a presentation on all things financial and funds and what to do with funds mm -hmm. and how to do yeah. funds. The interesting part that I took out of that is apparently fiscal officers because it's not our responsibility. Fiscal officers can move money within funds, within funds, not from one fund to another, or not appropriate from, you know, from the unappropriated amount, mm -hmm. which is what yeah. this has been done here. It can move funds without having to come before the board for oh. a resolution. So that is from line to line yeah. within the fund. Exactly. Yeah. And I thought that was standard procedure, but since it wasn't, I mean, outside of the township. I thought that was mm -hmm. how budgeting usually worked. Uh, but since we haven't been operating that way, I assumed it was um, in the spirit of the 1803 townships. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been. Okay. It might have been done since 1803. Anyway, that's just yeah. a bit of information. Um, I'm not sure it'll work its way down the line, but just for our edification in the future, we may find that useful. Or our fiscal officer may find that useful, useful because we, we can't It would make it that. easier for her. Yeah. The, la the last little item that I had, uh, as a result of going to the welfare government. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Dan has come up with an idea of uh, potentially, because he hasn't, he hasn't got any numbers, of putting an additional addition, an additional addition, putting an addition on the salt shed that's in the back of the Tachik garage facility. Um, we find ourselves having to store major equipment, expensive major equipment, outside all year long, mm -hmm. uh, which just seems to go against you know, I mean, I realize this stuff's supposed to be built for being outside. I mean, so we try to get it inside. Yeah, but it's nice. Yeah. For going the sun is amazing how it eats things up no matter what yeah. they're made out of. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's a project he's going to work on and give us some numbers and sizes and uh, in the future. However, as a result of it going to a local government conference, I've learned that his two largest funds that, that hold excess capacity in, in, in money uh, are the gas tax and the permissive motor vehicle license tax. And come to find out that the Ohio Revised Code prohibits using money from either of those two funds to build structures for the storage of road maintenance equipment. Can you believe it, that it's that specific? The gas one and which one? The permissive, permissive motor vehicle permissive. license fund. Oh. So that's 2011 and 2021. And so? And so, in the board's infinite wisdom, I'm hoping to, to part, peruse that infinite wisdom. For years, Forever, and for, and I'm not going to go into the reason why, but but I know the reason why. We used to pay salaries and and benefits out of both gas tax for one employee and a part-time employee, and 
and out of the road and bridge fund for another employee, basically because we didn't have enough money in the road and bridge fund to pay both of them. Mm -hmm. So we had to go to gas tax because gas tax always runs pretty tight for what, um, oh, excuse me, road and bridge always fund runs pretty tight for what we have for yearly appropriations, as you guys know, because you've gone through the budget and the appropriations. Now, there's nothing in the code that says, and we've already got 2021, if you look at 2021, there's, a, there's two salary lines, which yeah. can be you know, moved around, but there's an over, there's an over, there's a Medicare, and there's medical and hospitalization. There's absolutely no reason that we can't change from road and bridge the employee salaries into the gas tax fund, which then frees up a, specific, a particular amount of money in the road and bridge fund, okay. which can be used for obviously purposes such as this or other purchases that may or may not be not supposed to be from the water as code. And that would be about 65, 75, somewhere in the neighborhood of 75,000 plus dollars, which is plenty. Hopefully it's, that's way more than the, the addition is going to cost. <laughs> we <laughs> rough maybe 30, 40. Yeah, that's a good guess. Somewhere in there. Maybe not even that high, but. 30 or 40 thousand dollar addition? Mm -hmm. That's nothing these days. Yeah. I have people come in and build a garage. Yeah, but say, isn't it a shell? A isn't it just a, a, a shell? Well, it, it's kind of a shell, yeah. Is it, we got utilities and wiring? And <laughs> Not necessarily, but there's utilities next to the well, other. We have electric and you know, lighting, probably. There's already light in the building. I might as well just put some light in it, too. Yeah. It's, it's not heat or anything like that. Mm -hmm. right. I, I'm picturing, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the salt, and it's got just like a frame with a covering. Mm -hmm. It'll be more of that. Basically the same thing, only add it on to it. Thirty or forty thousand dollars for a shot on covering. Yep. I, I, <laughs> okay, well the sponsor hold it hold it on the welcome to the room. <laughs> That's room. too much. Well, no, I but mean, right now you're not proposing that we vote on this, we're just Oh no. We don't just have informational a, discussion, so we have no we have to go into this price. Excellent. What I would am proposing yeah. is to change these these line codes from road and bridge yeah. into the gas tax to, to yeah, free up potential amount of money. Even if we didn't do that, you know, we always run so close to road and bridge. What it, there's we have eighty seven thousand in that fund right now, and that is that is high. And we don't usually run appropriated. Hmm. You're 87,000. Where's the final appropriation? Okay. Final appropriation is 96. 96. Eight. Oh. Which because we, because, because, because we don't we haven't received all of our um that's that's what I was thinking because we haven't received all our revenue yet. Right. We have another half. We've only received well, we should have only received roughly 50%. We've only received 27%. 27, there you go. Mm -hmm. Which I don't understand, it should be, because that is that is a t twice a year distribution. And yeah, a lot of them say 20% and 25% is yeah, only one or two. That's why I, I, I'm wondering how, if we were, we know exactly where we are. Are those two funds, the, the, the gas and the permissive, fairly s s stable? And would you get the same amount from them every year? They actually increase every year. Well, okay, or go up gradually. Yeah. But the gas tax was increased, as you recall, from the previous or the prior, the present administration, the government administration that increased the gas tax by, for our benefit, I think two cents. Okay. So it it brought us an additional roughly thirty plus thousand a year okay. into that account. Okay. Permissive motor vehicle is obviously the higher. The more cars that are made, the more cars yeah. that are bought, you get that additional five dollars for each no. tag. And I and I'm listening to this and, and thinking everything is, is perfectly appropriate what you've discussed, but I'm also thinking when you put salaries into something, you want it to always 
you know, covered. You don't want your salaries to come out of a fund that goes up and down because, oops, now we have to move the salaries back over here. Yeah. No, that's not the problem. So no, and my there's, there's, we already have earmarked $100,000 for road repair this year out of the gas tax fund, and there's, there's still 100,000 unappropriated in that fund. Um, yeah, that will no, grow. There's no problem because yeah. that money comes in sequentially throughout the year. It's not yeah. a one time or, or two times so a we deal. Spend it before they think we don't need it. They can't take it, <laughs> fortunately. I just uh, yeah, that one doesn't have anything to do with the audit. If you um, right. when gas prices go up, do we get more money? Yes. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I, no, no, I take no. that back. We don't because no, it's, 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 it's that a percent gallons purchase per, per gallon. gallon. Oh, per gallon purchase, not, yeah. not price per gallon. Okay. So, mm -hmm. tell Elon Musk to quit making those cars. <laughs> we need less tax. Okay. Yeah, that's that's an interesting so, experiment. Did know. I make a motion? I I haven't heard a motion, okay. but I think I what, I, I, I entertain a motion to. Are we are we ask we're going to ask Margaret to to put one of the salaries into one of the other funds? Is that what we're doing? Yes. Why don't you wait until she has a resolution? Yeah, I, I feel that. like we ought to. We'll, we'll make a motion to have her prepare the legislation to do that. Okay. I didn't obtain a motion that we have Margaret prepare a resolution to put a, a, the line item for one of our salary employees from the roads and bridge fund to either um, the gas tax or permissive license ta oh, tax fund. license tax. Is that what we'd like to do? Um, since you brought it up, it would seem appropriate for you to make the motion. Oh. It's, uh, that is, Chris, it, oh. there has to be, it, it would be moving uh, account 231, 331, 90, that fund, that line, that, not fund. That line. That line, that appropriation line Can from. I have the number again, please. 2031, okay. 330. One nine zero. Move that from Road and Bridge, which is two zero three one, to Gas Tax, which is two zero two one. Same line number, and the next line two zero three one three thirty two one one, which is the Oper's um, a retirement system, which is obviously connected to the personnel cost. Again, up to the same line in the gas tax. Just those two lines. So we'll be paying both salaries. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. If you think that's what's going to work, okay. the most mm -hmm. flexibility. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of I here. second the motion. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Not that. Okay, shall we vote? Yeah, move and second it to ask the fiscal direct the fiscal officer to prepare a resolution to move salary line items as specified because I'm not, I'm going to clarify those later uh, as specified from road and bridges to the gas tax fund. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Mucci. Yes. Mr. Hoster. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Motion approved. Do we want to speak about 4901 or that just be a, no? Okay. It's a rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole. And none of us have the answer. Yep. All right, last but not least, zoning inspector. Certainly not least. Certainly not last either. Certainly not <laughs> last. Well, that, you have some new business, I remember. Um, since I last spoke with you, I've issued a couple of permits, but no, no big bucks. Uh, an addition to a garage and a porch on a house. But just uh, for Maryland's benefit, putting on a porch on a house is $10,000. <laughs> but a por porch has some heft to it. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't park a truck it's on like it, I'll tell you that. It would be a little heavier okay. than a car <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, the, Zoning Commission is, is, is struggling with revising the temporary use permits and uh, Brian and Greg are going to get together, just the two of them, to work 
on trying to get some wording at least to argue about <laughs> as opposed to theoretical discussions at the and they're having that meeting on the I think it's on the 12th um, so that's that's the primary focus on zoning commission I have passed on to them all this information at least I think I have all the information about solar and templates and all that but they but all of that is is useful once you decide what it is you want to have right but they haven't had that discussion yet um, also since I saw you last the Board of Zoning Appeals met to hear a front yard variance request what was interesting about that process was that at the at the meeting the scheduled meeting they discussed the matter for two hours continued the hearing to the next time that everybody could get together and it only took an hour and a half more at that meeting to finally come to a conclusion now that i would say that that discussion all of that was based on the difference between literally interpreting the code and solving the problem okay and the two didn't always seem to match each other in, in their opinion mm -hmm. and and so they were able to use the variance request since the variance request can be have conditions associated with it to put the conditions on it if they granted the variance that would improve the problems in the neighborhood mm -hmm. that, that were the result of all this. Mm -hmm. um, I look forward then to pointing all this out to the zoning commission and saying, you know, do if we have something in the code that says thou shalt not grant a variance if this situation occurs, and they said, well, but but but, uh, you know. That's a challenge mm -hmm. in, in the whole process. So that's all the more I think I need to say about that. Um, the, the issue, I guess, we might as well bring this up, is that Dave Chappelle, in order to provide the security that he feels is necessary to protect his residents, has had a great impact on his neighbors or neighbor who's Scott Hammond and family right across the street and so it's one thing for all of us to drive down Hyde Road and say well, why are all those police cars here it's another for for to have red flashing lights and shift changes and everything else going on at all times of the day and night for for their family and so hopefully by building this guardhouse which will be on the other side of the fence and 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 all parking for anybody involved in security will be on the other side of the fence that at least the fire call respond emergent fire commercial high road fire commercial high road More speed. Speaking of Hyde Road, I don't think that's commercial, but it would be. It have to be more speed. Is the only thing commercial on that end of the road. Um, let me see where where was. No it? Everything that's behind the fence. Yeah. So the hopefully there'll be that much Station less disturbance and it'll be that much more pleasant to sit on the front porch again. The station. You want your response? You know, it's basically disappeared. Uh, you know you to to but on the other hand, the, if you we've got two like lifestyles that are in opposition to each other. Okay, and we'll there's only so much that each of the parties can do to to um, solve that. Are they going to move the, the, the gate? Yeah, the gate's going to, they're going to, where the gate is now will, will, they'll move the fence back and the gate back yeah um, that in part came originally when I was talking with with Dave Chappelle's representative about this I said you know we don't even allow a house to be built closer than 30 feet back from the from the property line mm -hmm. in in this district mm -hmm. and so it seems to me that even 
even an accessory structure needs to be back at least that far. Um, and so that's actually where that came from, but it turned out to, to kind of, you know, get things out of the out of the roadway, right? You know, because they had actually put down more gravel out in front to park all these vehicles. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. And and so that's the goal is to get that back to just a driveway going back in. And and some things have been solved by by neighbors being friendly. Like the original gate went beep 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 and every time it opened. Well, that was got pretty old, pretty fast. Sure. You know, and it wasn't necessary to have all that mm -hmm. beeping on the gate. Um, you know, and, and everybody has different opinions about, well, why can't security people be here or be there? We've got cameras everywhere. Anyway, I don't want to start, I don't want to spend two, three and a half hours yeah, telling yeah. you about it. Thank but you. But that's why it was an in interesting, we'll say, issue. And, and we'll see. I mean, it could be that they don't build this fucking house. There's, this is just permission to build it. They haven't come in, you know, to get the permit to actually do it yet. Was Scott Hammond able to come and just Yes, Scott and, and family were here okay. um, at both at both meetings. And this was Corey Grimm, who's, who works for Dave Chappelle and was representing him. And that was up uh, and we and, and nobody else. Uh, so it was a more traditional kind of, of BZA hearing than we that we've had for a while. And it was a, the full five of them for the final decision? No, four. Oh Richard said. Uh, Dave Newhart got confused, even though we was, he was here when the next meeting was set up. He somehow thought it was Thursday rather than Wednesday, so. But Amy Aker finally got her chance to? Amy Aker was there. Cool. Participating, yes, is the first time as a new appointed yeah. BCA member. Um, the, let's see. I'm, 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 I've been watching Dan and Colin I'm going to be out of town from April 11th to April 25th, that two-week period. As usual, I will monitor all of my zoning responsibilities by right. email and phone. If, if there is something that absolutely demands a signature while I'm gone, and usually we just don't have anything that moves that fast, I know that Margaret is authorized right. to do that, and I can ask her to do it. Yeah. So Good. hopefully there won't be any glitches in the process. And um, I've done this many times before. But I, it's always good for everybody to know what's going on in case someone says, I can't get hold of that blankety blank Sony inspector. We um, struggle through. We struggle <laughs> yeah. through. Well, last that. year, I think around this time, there was a request that came out, came up for a temporary use, and, um, and they were frustrated because the timing, and they, you couldn't set a date till you could come back and advertise it. So hopefully no, that won't no. happen again. That was a little more complicated yeah, than okay. you just stated. Okay, it, but that's enough. Anyway. Um, hopefully that won't happen again. Yeah, hopefully that won't happen. And as I say, that one I negotiated before I left. Yeah. Okay. And it was a, and, and every and the the lawyer said that's fine. And then it was used as a complaint after the fact. And then if this if the same thing were to happen now, I would get the application and I can do everything remotely. I don't. Be in person, as I say, it's the only things that require me signing it. Cool. Everything else can happen at a distance, probably just as efficiently as they do when I'm here. No, Richard. Um, I think that's all I have for this okay. evening. Chris, you had potential six month moratorium on solar projects in Miami Township, both above and below 50 megawatts. What happened in the last week, Chris? You um, went to a local government company. No, it had nothing to do with local government now. Um, what happened was that the state of Ohio passed the law which enabled townships to control by zoning solar facilities under 50 megawatts. Oh, we, we did not have that. No, we didn't before. have that law before. So it was kind of like the Wild West, well, some people should do be able to do it and they should, but now there are specific, well, their language for that. Um, and as a result, we did receive, and, and, and from regional planning's continued work with other townships prior to this to get ready for what they thought would be a law to enable them to, to uh, uh, zone their townships. 
for, for solar. I thought it would be appropriate to give our zoning commission enough time to consider this project, um, either on their own or at the direction of this board, which we, as everybody knows, we are enabled to do, we're able to do, to get the feel for the necessity or the uh, predisposition of the township uh, and write zoning regulations accordingly. We did forward them a, uh, a nicely crafted, I thought, uh, boilerplate draft sort of zoning regulations from our attorneys. Uh, you were, right? Yeah, that, that went to all, all townships in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, it's a place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, there are at least a half a dozen regulations that are either in effect or being considered in different uh, townships in, in, the, in the county, God knows how many in the state. And I have asked, if I didn't say this, I have asked our regional planning director to research if there's, and she didn't know of any, anything that combined agricultural and solar anywhere in the yeah. universe. And there, world? In the there world. are some experiments. Oh, I have, I have I think it's going on in some places. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah place I, John gave me some information. Now tell me, uh, give me her contact information. No. Okay. What, what, in, what the state law did from my perspective is say that we can regulate solar, but it's not a utility. Mm -hmm. Right. Because that, you know, we, you know, not that it was the end of the world, but we regulated cell towers and then we're told by the state that we couldn't regulate them. Effect for almost universally. Right. And so it was like, oh, you go to a lot of work to regulate solar and then the state says no if it decides it's a utility and you can't, can't touch it. So that's, what I think, to me, what's most important about that law. Mm -hmm. we, I agree. Um, you know, and, and we just have to decide whether, I think it's still, if you're generating more electricity than you're typically using yourself, mm -hmm. then it's a commercial activity. Mm -hmm. and, and whether we want to somehow change our agricultural zoning to allow that kind of activity. Um, the other one, the, the idea that you can do both is interesting and complicated. Okay, Definitely complicated. The, I, I'll tell you just one thing about it. The amount of sun that's coming down is the same. So if the solar panels are using up some of it, some of it isn't going into vegetation that's, that's growing. Okay, you can't, you, you don't get both. And, but you, not all of the sun that comes down gets turned into electricity, so there's still some leftover to, speak, sun, yeah. to do something else. The, the difficulty from what I've read so far is that they're talking about pasture, and almost all animals that we have in the state of Ohio that are pastured have to be fed hay in the winter. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have the land that doesn't have solar on it to make the hay. Mm -hmm as well as the pasturing on some part of the year where you have the, have the solar. And whether that turns out to be practical, since we've almost stopped <laughs> pasturing mm -hmm. most animals right. and raising them in, in feedlots, mm -hmm. now remains to be seen. Um, back to your point about the commercial, and, and I understand what you're saying. Uh, one township in, in the county addressed that uh, with a fairly creative, I thought, for a property owner, for let's say a, a, a farmer, an agricultural facility that, that wanted to put solar on their property to generate enough for their residents and their farm operation. Right. What they do is the, 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 the zoning inspector or mm -hmm. somebody, when they're applying for this permit to put the residential zoning, whether it's on the roof or wherever it is, for the farm itself, for farm use. Right. Question arises in suspicious minds like mine, well, they get the permit and then they put a couple of hundred other panels off to the side and it's now they're now selling it for profit and that's not for their use, it's for commercial. What the zoning people do is they say, with the application, they need a, a copy of a year's worth of utility electric use 
on the farm. And I don't know how they. Yeah, well, that, that, and that would be a way to establish how many panels right. you could, you could and put out. That exceeds 125% at any particular time, then all hell breaks loose. I don't know okay. what that happens. Well, but. And, and you should theoretically be able to come in and say, next year, my utility bills were still over and above you know, what I'm generating because now I've got a, an electric tractor <laughs> or, or something. You know, it's, it, it could change mm -hmm. and still be, you need more solar for what you're doing because that's supposedly the goal of all the solar mm -hmm. is to replace fossil fuels, not just, um, you know. Yeah, they've got to test a truck or two. Uh, I've seen some estimates, this is talking of national estimated electric consumption if uh, if we really follow through on going totally electric vehicles that the demand may be double what we're doing now in electric mm -hmm. that's going to be rough but it's but a, that's uh, we're off on a progressive yeah. Yeah. But, but, but the decision we have to make is whether we're going to allow people to do beyond if yeah, we're allowed whether, to do whether, commercial, right? Beyond under, their farm needs. Whether within right. that is that is part of the small scale. Right. I mean, that's another section. Okay. In other words, that nobody has the right to do it. Between, but and we have to decide whether we have the the control of by zoning to decide how much how many solar panels you can put out. Um. And then just one last thing. Um, now I know for large scale you need to buy, be by high transmission lines, but I know there are people in houses who are selling it back to the company, you know, electric. You don't always, on some of the small things, you might not have to be, in order to sell back to a grid, you might not have to be near a um, high voltage area. Or I would, I mean, I don't know how much, generally speaking, a utility isn't going to put out any more wire that's expense, then they need to deliver the electricity. If the people are generating their own electricity, then there's capacity in their wires. And so they maybe theoretically could generate enough to use what they needed in the past and that much again without needing any new transmission lines. But if they're going to generate more than that, then there's the transmission lines have got to have the capacity to, to carry it. And yeah, probably not so much the transmission lines. You think it's the line from from the from the electric meter. Well, there's that too. They might to have the, the service might have to change. Yeah. But, and the size of the transformer on the pole, see, at some point, is going to change. So, it, when we the electric utilities right now, for the most part, are saying, you know, we'll buy whatever electricity you're you're generating in excess, which is kind of nice because nobody, everybody still has to get electricity during the night. Mm -hmm. Okay, but people aren't putting in battery banks yet. But to have their to have a zero bill, you see, the utility has to, to be able to use use what you're generating during the day and provide at night. So it's it will change as more and more people, if they do, go solar. Yeah. And the other thing is for for the average person, it's still a major investment. Mm -hmm. Okay, even with all the subsidies and everything else. And so how far people go with this or what scale works to, you know, you know, they, somebody passed on or I heard on NPR about, you know, they're gonna do a, a project in West Dayton. They bought, the, 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 the person doing the investment bought the farmland, not leasing it, and they're going to do just less than 50. Kilowatts, so they can megawatts. So they don't have to do with deal with the power siding board, mm -hmm. and the way they go. Um, but obviously, they've done enough planning to know how they're going to sell that electricity. Yeah, because it's it's not just individual property owners; it's also these companies. A, a company like <coughs> Samsung and Xenia, who wants to put in what is it, 25, 30 megawatts? They're not. Obviously, they have the capital, so we're not just looking at does, do people want to get together and put solar on their farm. We're also look, 
looking at those companies. Why not come in yeah. and put 20, yeah. 20 and million those are, that would be Yeah, yeah. that would be addressed in the, in the well, and, and regulations. So, and there's two possibilities. They could be just like the others where they want to lease land from a farmer, or they could be going out buying a farm, buying farmland. Mm -hmm. It just depends on what the cost of the land is that they can use. I mean, we're at a point now where the price of farmland has gone way up again. Mm -hmm. so let, I, let me address the, the second part of my sure. proposal. It, it just see, makes sense to me that if we're going to put a moratorium for six months on, uh, on small scale or under 50 megawatts, we want our zoning commission, we want our um, residents, we want our township to consider again whether we want to allow large scale so what i'm you know what i'm or what i'm suggesting is that we ask the county commission to put a six month restriction on miami township for any large scale zoning also large scale solar projects for the also. purpose of taking the temperature of the people again yes and so we don't get something pushed through that that didn't reflect the the overall, I guess we could say, will of the of the township. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, we're my not going to lead everybody, but we have to think about, you know, what the general direction. You know, are we are we going to stick with rural and agricultural, or are we going to change? Mm -hmm. My understanding is that the town, the county commission, uh, <clears throat> can either declare an area off. Um, you know, forbid solar right. above 50 watts uh, or not and then we would have to come back and say now uh, right now like we, don't have to we would like to remove mm -hmm. that yeah and they could vote on that yeah they, they're, they're, they're not they they wouldn't vote on a six month you, according um, up to Ashley, Ashley. Gave, Ashley and Brian Huddleston gave well, us a follow-up email I'll, that said, I'll, go, I'll defer to them, but I had not heard that. And even Jen Huber said she agreed, or I mean, we asked the question separately, but yes, it could that be wasn't what, a time restriction. What uh, Brandon said at first. Okay. Um, and then, of course, our the sixth the other moratorium would just be our... Um, we we would place the other mm -hmm. moratorium, yeah. and I think I mean, my, I'm not asking says. that we okay. do this today. Okay, thank you. At a future meeting, but not too far into the future, if that's okay, Madam Chair. Yeah, we have I would, time to think I, about I, it. I would uh, certainly like to do it as soon as possible. Hmm. So would I. What on the agenda for the next meeting? That gives us two weeks to think about it. Or me to think about it, I guess you guys have already thought. That's all I had for what ended up being old old business. Uh, I'll, I'll just actually, make a comment. Actually, you do, I hate to remind you, but you do have one other thing, Chris. But I do. Go ahead, Don. Uh, on the solar, I just wanted to say my, the uh, okay. my first commitment is to agricultural continued agricultural use in agricultural zone. If there can be solar that, in, that continues agricultural use, great. But uh, I would basically block, I would oppose uh, industrial scale. Okay, well. What about under, under industrial scale that replaces agriculture? Under, you mean you say less you, than? Less than. Well, I'm, I'm using industrial scale, but not, not utility not really scale, good. but just. Okay. So, All right. Um, the very last item, very last item, is if we recall quite a few meetings ago, we discussed the possibility of uh, producing a document with another document with zoning bylaws and procedures. Um, and that kind of got off by the wayside after a while. Yeah, that was mine. Um, sent out, you know, 
set up multiple. What, what are zone bylaws? BZA. BZA. Oh, BZA. So, there wasn't much. So they're going to say the zoning commission has bylaws. The BZA. The, yeah. Um, they're they're hard to. They're but. I, I talked with them a little bit more about this at the end of the second <laughs> hearing. Originally, if the first hearing had lasted an hour, we would have had the next thing on the agenda, but we, by the time they had done their three and a half hours, they wouldn't be willing to do any talking. So uh, we'll schedule another, we'll schedule a meeting easy, just for the that. The easiest purpose. thing would be to put, put a draft in front of, it says, when, when I appealed to them to, to let's, compare all these and, and, and write one, which is hard to do anyway, group projects. I mean, we all remember them in school, they, one person did all the work. Um, no, the easiest thing might be- They've done a couple of times and they still don't they, The easiest do thing is put some, it's nothing like putting, say we're gonna, or we're, we're thinking about passing this to get people interested in what's in it. Like maybe put one in front of them. And, well, as I say, twice that, twice has, that, that has happened. Third time's a charm. I'll so well, yeah, maybe it's time to try again. No, and and I realized that I've got the I don't know what the, the, the position or whatever to push them along. They they're not going to call a meeting themselves to do it, even though strictly speaking, that's how things are supposed to operate. They're used to me setting up meetings for them, so I have to set up a meeting for them to do that work. Or at the next BZA. I mean, yeah. You don't, don't well, need them until you need them. So. But they, they just when we were doing this, they were saying, oh, well, we've only got three people, you know, we've got four people or whatever, you know, what, how does that work with the vote? I said, that's why you need your bylaws. So that that's perfectly clear, because all I can tell you is what conventions are. Mm -hmm. But you have to make those decisions. Yeah. Well, it's just like, we we had at at the second at the continuance of the hearing we had neither the chair nor the we don't have a vice chair but the person that was chairing the previous meeting so we we had a third person move into that position and all lots of interesting things yeah. that happened um, yeah, yeah. Um, okay very good I'm noticing one thing that I didn't hear so we already see I'll, I'll read it through and. Okay. Mark it up too, and um, I, I noticed last time. And one of the examples I found was very specific language about if you have alternates, what role do they play? That might be in the revised code, but it might not be. Like if suppose you have by some by the some miracle we could get two people who want to be yeah. alternates. I know we're going to get them eventually. There there are okay. some fairly standard things. Whether it's, it's probably not ORC law, but if an alternate participate for that, but you have this continuation, all right? The, the continuation has to be the same people that started it. You don't, you don't switch and say, oh, so-and-so that was absent is here now, so the alternate doesn't participate. Mm -hmm. That they, yeah, I, I can't remember. but that's the only way an alternate votes is when they're sitting in for someone else. Right. And they continue to sit in for that person until the case that's being heard is complete. But for example, the, the time, the notorious time we had four, if we'd had two alternates, one of the, the first alternate line would have... Then we would have had five. Have had, we would have had five. Yeah. No, that's the and purpose also, of the I alternate, would, is, to, is yeah. to guarantee you have a four. Yeah. We got down to three people. <laughs> you know, it and gets I think a little dicey. Arguably, the, uh, the other purpose of an alternate is so when you lose somebody, you have somebody already up to speed. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. No, it's, and as you say. It's that old perfect world again, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it gets in the way. Um, so, okay. I, I have a dream that we're gonna have BZA laws before the summer's up. Okay, that's a nice dream. <laughs> okay. Well, well this is on our agenda. I don't have anything else for the agenda. Um, but there was something earlier in the meeting that you said was going to go under new business. I just... Yeah. When you were doing communications. Oh, um, it was the um, BJG. Um, our, our lawyers in Columbus sent us the yeah, small solar facilities. We covered that. Oh, okay. And we have no new business, although I, I would argue that some of this was new business, old business. 
Anybody have some old business? Surely well, you could wrestle up a few more topics. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of a combination between the zoning and old business with the yeah. Yeah. moratorium. Um, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second I, I vote second yes. Us.